With the announcement of the upcoming title Monster Hunter Wilds, the community once again came together to celebrate the return of this very special franchise and quickly erupted into a frenzy of discussion regarding all possible aspects this new game might change or add. No matter if you are a fan of Rise, World or even the older entries, everyone is excited to play the first Monster Hunter of the 6th generation and with all that enthusiasm comes a lot of expectations. Of course, that is nothing new in the gaming industry. People enjoy a game a lot, a sequel comes up and players immediately begin guessing what the next installment can offer. Wilds, however, is a step beyond that. A 90 second trailer not only created an absolutely massive hype train to the point that literally revived another game as a result, it also instantly implied huge changes to the series. Changes that blew hunters completely out of the water. Being fully open world, player mounts, a truly immersive simulated ecosystem, two simultaneous weapons, the return of scout flies and slinger. Not all of these were 100% confirmants of Yacht of course, but they are heavily implied and that uncertainty makes the community even more excited, and also brings wilder speculations. Many players wish different things for the next Monster Hunter game, but despite the vast array of ideas and features people want, there's always a level of overlap between them, with multiple content creators discussing the viability of their implementation. And one of them, the one that we are going to talk about today, is the addition of a brand new weapon. Weaponry is an extremely fundamental component of the franchise. A set of tools that allow players to express themselves under the combat dynamic the series has. Your weapon of choice is an extension of you, of how you like to approach the game's combat. Great sword users like big numbers. They enjoy being able to inflict huge amounts of damage on a singular hit but they are also patient and calculating hunters. Greatsword masters know where and when to hit the monster, often spending more time waiting for the right opportunity to strike than to actually fighting their target. Charge blade mains though find fulfillment in its complexity and versatility. They like the freedom of being offensive and defensive whenever they want and doing so seamlessly. Obviously, this is a simplification and generalization of the characteristics specific players have, but overall, people that main each weapon do so because every single one of them offers an experience and a gameplay style that they are captivated by. And the concept of a new type being added is commonly welcome because that equals to a whole additional playstyle being implemented. But just because people would like it, doesn't mean it would benefit the game in its entirety, or that it's a good idea to begin with. Over the past two decades, Monster Hunter gathered a total of 14 weapons in its mainline series, and 17 when counting every single game under this IP. All of them are equally unique, greatly designed, and each one provides an isolated and specific experience. Some may be more popular than others of course, but none, no matter how simple or complex they may be, are more or less developed than the rest. Except Lance. Oh boy, poor Lance mates. Even Gun Lance gets cool shit nowadays. However, that being said, despite the insane talent Capcom has, this level of quality cannot be stretched into infinity. At some point, there would be so many weapon types that people would be able to easily see a discrepancy between them when it comes to design quality. I mean, it would be cool to have 30, 40, 50 weapons, but it's naive to say that all of them would be distinct from one another. There are only so many niches and playstyles a game can cover, and I believe that limit is getting really, really close to being reached. There are some of them that are a little bit too related to one another. Obviously they are still unique in their own right, but they are clearly a lot more similar to each other than to any other type available. So this begs the question, 
how many more could they add? How many until the roster reaches a critical mass where any new weapon would solely be a variation of an existing one? This is rather difficult to answer. I'm sure Capcom could succeed in creating original, well-designed and generally fun weapons. They already made it 17 times and I wouldn't be surprised if they could keep doing it a bit longer. But if they do indeed keep doing it, that limit one day will be reached. And the fact that no one truly knows the definitive number of that limit makes it even more risky. More so, just by doing it, that will inherently create an expectation within the community. Players will expect Capcom to do it again in the future. In fact, that's exactly what's happening right now. Ever since 2004 that weapons were slowly added up until Monster Hunter 4, 11 years ago, and people are still expecting a brand new weapon to be added eventually. And the more frequently they implement them, the more frequent is that expectation. What I believe the developers have been doing to avoid introducing a 15 weapon is adding more moves and features to the already existing ones, make them more in-depth, more complex. But of course, that approach also has its own eventual issues. They can't simply increase the weapon's moveset indefinitely either, so at some point they will have to choose between that finally adding the 15th or do neither. And as if that wasn't enough, there's also another aspect that makes this more of a detriment than a benefit to the game as a whole. We cannot forget that adding a new type doesn't solely imply a new toy for us to play with. It also involves many other components of the game. With it comes new monster weapons for that new type, weapon balancing, monster updates to deal with it. Obviously, I'm not saying that's a problem on its own. What is truly the problem is the amount of work, money and resources required to do all of that. Just for a single weapon they would have to make dozens of new models, dozens of new sound and visual effects, add new monster animations for new attacks that they will need to punish whatever new moves or mechanics that weapon can bring. That is a lot. And that work doesn't increase gradually, it's exponential. Not to mention that it's very likely that the other 14 would be penalized in some way, shape or form with the introduction of the 15th. Maybe they don't get new moves, maybe they all get nerfed. Actually that would be nice for some of them. Perhaps they even remove certain moves to save time and resources. There is no certainty that this would happen of course, but we need to always consider all possibilities before concluding if an idea is beneficial for the game or not. And after all this considered, I personally believe that the implementation of a new weapon type in Monster Hunter Wilds would be an overall net negative. Should Capcom never add a new type ever again? No. But I don't think Wilds is the right entry to do so. We can already see that the environment and ecosystem aspect of it is being heavily, heavily emphasized. So if on top of it they add something as impactful and resource intensive as another weapon to the mix, there would be an almost 100% certainty that something in the game would be directly penalized for it. But I am also of the opinion that they should add one on the next Monster Hunter game. The one that will most likely be the portable title of the 6th generation. That is the best opportunity for Capcom to consider making such addition. Portable titles are known and notorious for introducing temporary and experimental features of mechanics that sometimes, if received well enough, are permanently added to the series. And by picking that specific entry, they would be fully adapted at working with RE Engine, since they would technically be the third Monster Hunter game using that engine, making it the best candidate for such significant inclusion. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel and the content I create. If you want to join the ranks you can do so for only $1 a month, the link will be in the description. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and opinions down below, join our Discord server, engage with the community and I hope to see you all next time.